In this segment, I'm going to take a look at the object properties for an outline, and this time specifically how they relate to the satin serial outline. So I'll go ahead and switch the object that has the running outline now with a special style and change it to the satin serial outline. And the first thing you're going to want to do is just control the outline width. And that's found on your tool options. And right now it's set at a one millimeter satin column. And I could go ahead and change it to two millimeters and it gets fatter. And if I want to, I could change it to three millimeters or any width that of satin column that you want can be controlled. Now, um, generally speaking, when you use a satin serial, you still have that ability to offset it. So if you wanted to um, offset it by a millimeter, you have that ability. Let's just change it up to one millimeter here. Well, that's 10. Whatever, you can offset it by 10 millimeters if you want to. Um, but anyway, the idea is you have that ability to still offset it with a satin serial. Now, patterns don't generally apply to satin stitches because, like I said before, they're really not meant to be carved up. They're meant to be a stitch on the outside, a stitch on the outside. So I was just leaving it at none. It is possible, I guess, if you had a very wide satin outline that you might want to start applying some patterns to it. Um, but that's just not the traditional use anyway. So, um, But you do have the ability. They, they, they will turn on. It's just I think you would need to have a pretty fat satin column before you would really start to have even be able to see them. Now, um, I'll just skip over the remove overlaps and sequence for a moment. And those are generally the same as they were for the fill stitch tab. I don't believe there's any real difference. I think, in fact, um, you'll find that they're almost exactly the same. But let's just look. The difference being with um, the fill tab to the outline tab is when we choose a satin stitch outline, we have the ability to directly override or <clears throat> influence the density, the compensation, and the underlay, as opposed to on the fill stitch tab where we actually had to um, rely on the fabric settings to make those changes. With the satin outline, we can control specifically the density, compensation, or underlay. So I'll go ahead and talk about those now. Um, Density really relates to the spacing between rows of stitches, and it's it's defaulted to 0.4 because my fabric right now is set for embroidery normal. But if I wanted to, I could change that to be 0.41 or 0.42 or 0.45 or 5, whatever. And if I hit enter, it will change. It will make that change. Now, if I zoom in, you can see here. That's what we're talking about is the density is the distance between rows of stitches and you can adjust what that density is going to be. You can also adjust the compensation and the compensation really relates to, um, well, it has to do with pull and the fact that when we stitch out an embroidery design, um, the stitches traveling back and forth create tension on the thread and that combined with the give of our fabric tends to make things get a little bit smaller. And so most embroidery software is going to be set up with compensation. And that's what this is here. So if we increase our compensation, all that's really going to do is um, fatten up the, the satin column to make more compensation than less. And um, the last setting that we can control in here is the underlay choice. And now we have direct control over the type of underlay choices we get. Now, I'll see if I pop up this list, you can see here that we, can, can, we could choose from tracking to single underlay to double underlay to zigzag underlay to cross underlay zigzag plus which means zigzag plus a double cross plus which is going to give you the cross plus a double netting and netting plus and we also have double zigzag and double zigzag plus and I'm just going to leave it I guess right now it's set on cross so let's just take a look at what that looks like if we go to slow redraw and push start so the cross is giving me more or less a zigzag underlay, but in, in the regular zigzag underlay, the zig the stitches travel the shortest distance across the shape, such same as the satin stitched column that comes on top. But with this um, cross underlay, the zigzags have been rotated onto a bit of an angle, looks like 45 degrees, and so it gives a longer zigzag effect. And so that's the cross. Now, if I wanted to, I could change it. Let's just, I guess, why don't we look at zigzag? And then we'll go ahead and do the slow redraw and see the difference. So now we have a zigzag underlay versus that cross underlay. And then, of course, the satin column comes on top. 
I'll stop it and select it again and this time why don't we go to um, cross plus and see what that gives us so again slow redraw push start so here we get an edge underlay where it's going to travel around both edges and then it's going to give us the cross and when it completes the cross then it's going to go ahead and finish this satin stitch column so embroidery if you haven't guessed embroidery underlay is quite important this is what's going to give you um, a better sewing result or it's going to change your sewing results so embroidery left with very little underlay tends to be flat and may sink into your fabric um, that said maybe we're creating something that's meant to be shading and we don't want it we purposely want that stitching to sink into the layer below and therefore we might want to have as little underlay as possible um, so you have the ability to override and control your underlay so if I go to double zigzag plus then I'm gonna have um, lots of underlay here so we're gonna have the edge run and then we'll have a zigzag going at two different directions so there'll be a zigzag that's going to be the first pass of zigzag then a second pass of zigzag and then we have the satin column so all of that said when you choose an object it's the object properties is how you're able to control the settings for the outline and the weave fill and the more you learn to take control of these settings then the more you'll be able to um, influence how the overall stitching result of your design is so yeah, that's the object properties. I'm going to come back with another segment and just talk again about remove overlaps and just look at how that applies with outline objects.